Oh no, this is not the time to wobble for West Brom. What's happening? Let's find out from our Baggies fan, Dan. How are you, Dan? Uh, I'm very well, thank you. Okay, we'll check on your nerves in a minute. And then, of course, we are joined on the West Brom View this week by our Stoke fan, Liam. How are you, Liam? With Mark, you? Yeah, you're looking forward to West Brom coming into town? It's uh, used to be an old phrase that you never lose to West Brom. That's not really happening I used in recent years. Yeah, I, I used to look forward to West Brom coming to town. <laughs> I don't look forward to anyone coming to town now, so we'll see how it goes. Okay. Uh, Dan, let's have a chat then about uh, that uh, that Watford game, first of all, shall we? Um, what, what, it's a strange game. What, what did you make of it? Um, it just looked like neither team could really get going. Um, and then... But Watford just sort of seemed to like up the pressure and uh, like they the finally got that goal. And I think heads just sort of dropped. Um, like we just couldn't really get the ball back. It was just all Watford. And then, like, to be fair, I could see their second goal coming and, and it did. And it was like, oh dear. Um, like, I just didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, it was like, okay, is this, is this the point now where we... Look, just finally drop out of the playoffs. Um, and just, I think just the pressure, I think, yeah, I do think the pressure just get into us now. Um, and we are starting to wobble. But then, uh, look, Corbin made a few changes and it just completely changed the game. We brought Dean Garner on, uh, that MVR came on. Um, and yeah, we, we, we actually look more of a threat going forward. Um, I, I think Wallace played uh, a huge part of it as well, as far as rallying the troops, getting the guys forward. Um, and then, of course, well, I, I tweeted about Thomas Asante at half time, just, yeah, just criticising him. And then he goes and scores. To be fair, that's not the first time he's done that where I've criticised him and he goes and scores. So I might just keep doing it, actually. It seemed to work. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Um, it it, it it does score a great goal uh, to bring it back to two one, and then just out of nowhere, uh, it was a great one two between Thomas Santa and Dean Garner, and then out of all the players, Darnell Furlong just pings one in the top bin, um, and then just limbs everywhere. So it was, it, it was a great great comeback actually, and just great to see like that bit of fight in him. Um, but the, I just no idea what happened for us to go two nil down as well. Yeah, just just going back to Thomas Asante, obviously top scorer last season. Do you think the, the criticism has been unfair at times this year? I mean, he's in double figures for you now. I know there's some teams, including the one we're going to talk about in a minute, Stoke, who'd kill for a striker or any player in double figures. I mean, look, he, he does have moments of brilliance, but most of the time, it's it's not look, his first touch. I, I've complained about it so many times, and it just seems to bounce off him. But then sometimes it just sticks in like glue, and I, I just don't get what's going on. Okay, look, he has been been out of the team, and maybe this is like his way of saying, "Look, I'm still a base. So I can still do whatever I need to." But well, most of the time, it's it, it, it's painful watching. Look, he, he'll get the ball, um, he'll, he'll use his strength to not not get away from the players, but then he'll just take that one too many touches and just lose it, and he's like, oh, "All right." Back to square one, but yeah, he's he is he is a decent player to have. But if he was to go up, I don't think he's anywhere near Premier League quality. Okay, so Stoke have lost to every Midlands club they've played so far at the Bet Three Six Five this season, other than West Brom, who they did beat. Uh, in the League Cup, uh, if I remember rightly, uh, earlier in the year. Um, it was a long time ago. <laughs> Hell, I don't count now. There is no count now. Um, uh, Dan, the last time West Brom lost an away fixture was, was two and a half months. What, how, what does Stoke do to beat you? Um, I, I think they just have to look um, at like, what Millwall did um, against us. They just completely pressed us, didn't give us really much time on the ball and just actually brought the game to us um, and really just, just put pressure on us, to be honest. And we, we just seem to crumble. Okay. Uh, Liam, still capable of doing that, the the, the, the high press? Um, yeah, I saw something on, on Twitter earlier really today that only Leicester, Leeds and Ipswich have pressed the ball further up the pitch and been more successful on it than we have. So it is probably one of our strengths, pressing the ball. It's just when we get it up that end of the pitch, we can't put it in the net. 
Um, so, yeah, I think it might work into our hands. It's just try and get over this hoodoo of just of just trying to... We, we've got a, a massive thing of getting a good result and just not quite finishing it off. I mean, if we'd have beat Huddersfield, I think that would have pretty much been it. We'd have been eight points away from relegation. Um, so let's see what happens. Yeah, with uh, Sheffield Wednesday facing QPR as well, and and Huddersfield as well. Yeah, this this is not a game you can you can say. Well, it's West Brom. We'll we'll settle for a point. Is it? You've got to go for this one, haven't you? Yeah, I think so. I I, I think every team in this league you should set up to go for. I, I don't think there's anybody to be feared. You've seen it, and you you know Leicester have been dropping off. Ipswich had a run where they could. Ipswich come to us and would you drew nil nil with them? They barely created anything, and that was over Christmas when they were going over there off period. So I don't think there's anybody who should ever be feared. Um, you should always go for it. I think Schumacher is airy more on the side of caution recently. Um, I think he'd rather scrape over the line because, not to blow Stoke's trumpet as a big club, but I think it's still quite a big opportunity for Schumacher if he keeps us up to get a summer and to go again. So I think he's just going for the. Creep over the line, uh, shall we say? All right, then we've got two, I think, very tactically astute managers uh, in this game. Uh, Dan, it's fair to say that Coburn's prowess in this area has saved you from when you've gone a goal down. I think um, you've gained five points from, from losing positions in in three of the last four games. I think there's a there's a triple change. I think that got. Uh, roundly kind of criticised against Watford but then of course the reaction was well you you left with a point do you do you see now you've got a manager who doesn't just stand the touchlines going oh well you know we've lost this or settle for a draw who actually will change things oh yeah definitely um, I mean look you watch him on a touchline he just doesn't stop jumping about arms waving everywhere and he's just so animated and it, it, it is great to see because then it, that sort of reflects as well on lot like, the players and they sort of react to it really well. Um, not probably no idea what he's shouting at the players. I was, to be fair, when I hear his interviews, I can barely understand what he says anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> no idea if the players understand it, but they, I think they just sort of look at his, his actions on the pitch, think, oh, okay, we must start doing better. And to be fair, it, it happened um, when we played Watford and it, it sort of worked. So, yeah, hopefully... Uh, yeah, he is a really good manager, to be fair. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad to have him. All right. And of course, Plymouth fans are missing uh, their old manager, having now just sacked the, their replacement for him. And of course, they'll be coming to the Bet365 in a couple of weeks for a potential six pointer loser goes down match, <laughs> uh, which would be just I, I, awful. I, just really hope this, I really hope it's done by then. The pressure on that game could be immense. Same with the Sheffield Wednesday one. All right, thank you. Let's get some score predictions from you both, then, and I'll let you go. Um, Liam, you go first. Um, I think it's going to be a really tough game, as they all are down Stoke. I think Westbrook, I think Corbyn's a fantastic manager, probably up there with one of the best in the league. Um, I'm hoping we just keep the points going, get a point. I'll take a point, just keep keep edging away. A win would be great, but I'm going to go for 1 1. Dan? Um, I think we'll nick it 2 1. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see. We'll like the winner will come off like Thomas Asante's backside or something. <laughs> All right, well, listen, you both enjoy the game, and we will catch up with you both uh, next week. Cheers, fellas. Cheers, Cheers thank you. See you later.